Hi all, uh, and thank you for joining us uh, for a live webinar uh, on a single share trading on a Philip MT5 uh, platform. Um, I'm Jeremy Fu, your presenter for today. Uh, we'll be starting the session proper at about 7.02, so let's just give a few minutes for you know some of our friends to join us. Um, so just sit back uh, and enjoy. Hi, very good evening to everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us for our live webinar on uh, single share trading on Philip MT5 platform. Um, I'm Jeremy Fu. I'm an account executive for Philip Futures. So in today's webinar, we'll be just discussing a few basics on what is CFD trading all about. Before we begin, I would like to do a sound check. If you can hear me loud and clear, just type yes into the question box. Also, during the webinar, if you have any questions, do type them into the question box and I will address them during the Q&A session at the end of the webinar. All right, looks like everyone can hear me clearly. So let's begin um, tonight's webinar. So tonight's uh, webinar will be uh, on CFD trading. So uh, yeah, my name is Jeremy Fu. Uh, today is 15th of July. So uh, sit back and enjoy. So just a little bit of a disclaimer before we start. Um, all information that's shared is uh, basically for uh, educational purposes and it's not actually a recommendation for any trade. So a few things that we'll be going through today. 
um, introduction to CFD share trading, some of the key features of CFD trading, a few of the order types on MT5 to make your trading a little bit easier. Uh, obviously, going through some risk management as a leveraged product as uh, for CFD, and finally getting started trading uh, with us. So a little bit about me. Uh, unfortunately, you can't see me, uh, but that's uh, that's a picture of what I actually look like. Um, so I'm the licensed MES representative uh, with Philip Futures. Uh, before COVID, uh, obviously uh, I've been doing seminars, and since then uh, we only can host webinars due to some of the restrictions. So a few of the products that I specialize in would be forex uh, futures and options on the futures, uh, such as financial. Um, currency futures, commodities, uh, and then of course CFD, which stands for contract for difference. So whether you're a beginner trader or maybe you have some experience and maybe you want to, you know, you might be looking to learn a little bit more about how to trade, um, I can do that for you. Or if you have experience and like to fine tune some of your trading strategy or look at maybe some indicators that might be beneficial for your trading i can do that as well and to as well as to help you understand just a little bit how the market movements so that you don't wake up one day and say like oh why why did the why did the market move this way that way you know and how we can prevent that and predict future market uh, movements So yep, I've, uh, all of our webinars are actually recorded and uploaded to our YouTube channel or company website. So you actually can view all of that um, again and again um, as many times as you want. Uh, if maybe you feel that one of the webinars is beneficial for you. So um, yep, look me up. Uh, you can message me at the end. I'll provide you with my mobile. Um, and otherwise, you can go to our YouTube channel and check out all of our uh, webinars. So I've done a, quite a few. I've also done a market watch video. Uh, so far, yeah, so yeah, do check that out. So maybe what you have heard, uh, you know, some of the terms, stocks, shares, securities, equities. So they're actually all, uh, what are they actually? So they're actually similar terms used to describe units of ownership in a company. And once you buy a share into a company or stock of a company, you are actually a shareholder. And as a shareholder, you are entitled to company earnings as a dividend payment and as well as voting rights. So all these shares and securities are actually traded on stock exchanges such as SGX, uh, NYSE stands for New York Stock Exchange, uh, NDAQ is the NASDAQ and HKEX actually is the Han, uh, Hong Kong Index, uh, Hong Kong Stock Exchange, sorry. So why, why do people trade shares you might ask? So, when you buy or invest into the shares of a company, if the company grows and its value increases over time, the value of the shares also rise in value. So mainly for the money, of course, you can then sell your shares off to another buyer at a higher price, and then you'll be netting a profit. In the meantime, uh, you can also receive dividends from company earnings as a shareholder, or if you hold the shares of a company and they release dividends, then you would receive this as well in a monetary sense. Um, on the flip side, on the downside, should the company decrease in value, share price will also fall, resulting in a possible loss on your capital investment. So what is actually CFD trading? So like I said earlier, CFD stands for contract for difference. So it's actually a financial contract between a buyer and a seller, between an asset over a specific period of time. So it's actually opportunity for investors to inv uh, profit from price movements without actually owning any of the underlying asset. So just to note, if you trade CFD, there'll be no physical delivery of any of the goods. If let's say you trade commodities and there'll be any no delivery of um, securities or stocks at the end of your uh, contract. So it has enormous popularity in the past decade and lots of people have been starting to trade CFD mainly because of the leverage that it offers. So just to note, CFD is traded over the counter uh, or OTC as they call it, and all transactions are conducted electronically. So why should you trade CFD or why do people trade CFD? So one of the reasons is due to the leverage and currently we offer up to 10 times uh, leverage on our CFD products. 
um, some might be more or uh, some might be less, but the maximum would be 10 times. So what this means is that investors only need to come up with a fraction of the required capital, uh, maybe a 10 or 20%. So a 10% would work up to the 10 times of leverage because 10 times 10 equals 100%. So this means that you actually need less capital for actually the full market exposure. Uh, another reason, the buy direction. So normally, if you are a stock trader, normally you only can look for good prices to buy shares in hope that the price would appreciate over time. So CFD actually allows you to short a stock without actually owning them to profit from declining share prices as well. This would work if let's say you uh, want to do some hedging on your uh, uh, stock stocks. Uh, if you bought some stocks, maybe you want to do some hedging. So the only way I think you can do it would be CFD. So third reason, high liquidity. So there was an average of six billion uh, shares traded daily on an average. So as long as there's liquidity um, in the market, there will be liquidity as as you trade CFD. Um, zero percent commission on our MT5 for all of our stocks um, on on our MT5 platform. However, this is not might not be applicable to all brokers. So this might be one of the plus points for you to start trading with us. Uh, and then finally, dividend adjustment. So uh, if let's say there is a release of dividend, you will be adjusted or compensated accordingly from the dividend. So should you buy or sell? If maybe you are maybe not so clear on this portion. So basically to make it easier, if you predict the share price to rise, then you should be going long or doing a buy. Uh, and of course, if you buy and the price rises, then you'll be in profit. And if you predict share prices to fall, you should be going short or maybe do a sell. And if you sell and the price falls from the price that you shorted at, then you'll be in profit. But this works the other way as well. So if let's say you do a buy and the price falls, then that will be a slight loss in your account or in your capital investment. Similarly, if you sell or short a share and the price rises, then that will be a loss. So some of the key features of CFD trading. So I just extracted this from my MT5 platform. So I just do two shares for you. Uh, one would be the one would be Tesla and one would be Apple. One of like the uh, you know hot hot shares, popular shares that are being traded currently. So from the what you can see uh, on our MT5, um, obviously if you know it, this would be the left hand side price would be the bid and offer or bid and ask price. But to make it easier, we just put a buy and sell because. Um, Everybody wants to buy low, sell high. So when you have when you buy would have to be on the slightly higher price, and when you sell back would be on the slightly lower price. The price difference is known as the spread, and uh, yep, it varies between different products. Uh, products which has definitely high li higher liquidity has definitely a better spread. So obviously the the lowest you can go is one share, for example. So um, then you can see the low and high um for the day as well and the current price so let's say when you buy one tesla share uh, example um if let's say the price is 683 um and you did a buy one week later the price increases to 700 dollars therefore you would have made a 17 dollar profit because of the 700 minus 683 so that will be for one share if you bought five tesla shares then obviously your profit would be multiplied by five and that would be a $85 profit um, once the price reaches $700. So for example, if let's say you are selling five Apple shares on the, on, the, on, on the different side, if let's say you did a sell instead of a buy, if you think that the price is going to fall. So let's say you sold five Apple shares at 144 and the two weeks later, the price dropped by $20. So because 20 times 5, therefore your profit would be 100. So if you did 10 shares, then it would be 20 times 10 equals $200 profit. So how much do you, money do you need to 
trade CFD. So it actually depends on the price of the share that you're trading. Obviously, if the share price is lower, then you need much less. If the share price is much higher, you would need a lot more. Uh, it's denominated as a percentage of current share price and would increase or decrease based on the share price. So it's actually a uh, like a fluctuating uh, margin. It's not a fixed margin, it's actually fluctuating. So the margin for Singapore shares are at 10%. Uh, margin for US and Hong Kong shares would be at 20% due to the slight um, difference in volatility. So Singapore shares are known to be a little bit more stable. So therefore we have a much uh, less margin as compared to US shares. So how much money do you actually need? So let's say for example, you wanna buy one DBS share. So if let's say the share price is about $30, which is it is currently, so you will need about 10% in your account. So 10 times 10% 10 times $30 would be about $3 Singapore dollars. So an example, yeah, for a Tesla share, 20% of let's say 685, which is the current share price, then you need about 137 to buy one Tesla share. And obviously, let's say you want to trade Hong Kong market, uh, one ten, uh, 10 cent share, then it'll be 20% of $550. So you need about 110 Hong Kong dollars. So why should you not trade CFD? So um, I feel that the two main reasons why people trade shares is obviously profit from appreciating share price. Uh, and secondly would be earnings from dividends. So with CFD, you actually can profit from appreciating share price and also profit from depreciating share price. If let's say the share price is going to drop and you did a sell, you actually can profit it from there as well. And you also receive dividend adjustment on CFD position. So if let's say the company releases a uh, dividend, uh, we actually adjust that accordingly to your uh, position. However, if you are short, let's say you did a short on, the, on a share, um, that will be a negative dividend. So it will be a negative instead of a plus. So plus would be for buy and then negative would be for a sell. So what I feel that CFD actually works pretty well is because what are the chances of big companies like DBS or Apple, you know, dropping by, you know, more than half of their current market value. So what are the chances that, you know, we, we see DBS, you know, at, at, you know, $15, $10, you know, it's pretty unlikely. Um, so why not use the leverage to your advantage on relatively stable share classes? So use the leverage to your advantage because the chances of, you know, sh these kind of uh, big MNC companies or big companies that are relatively stable of them dropping down significantly and you, you know, losing more like a lot of your account. So I don't think that that's going to happen um, at least. And so actually CFD might work actually pretty well for you. So as you know, we don't have any commission charges or we don't have any hidden charges uh, when you trade, but when you trade CFD, there's actually um, financing charges or swaps as some people might call it. So as you are borrowing or financing the rest of your traded contract value, there is uh, financing or sort of borrowing charges for holding of CFD positions overnight. So if you open and close your CFD positions during the same day, same trading day, so you will not actually incur these charges. Uh, these charges range from about three to 5% per annum calculated daily. So if you did the whole calculation, it'll be contract value times interest rate of three to 5% um, divided by the total number of days. So 365 days in a year times the number of days you actually hold your position. So obviously, if you hold less days, there'll be less cost. And if you hold more days, there'll be actually more cost. Uh, it's seen as a boring charge, but usually if you are trading shares, it might be relatively insignificant, uh, I would say, um, as compared to maybe the profits in your account. But nonetheless, it's actually charges. So just want to be transparent, just to let you know of all the charges that you might be incurring when trading uh, CFD. So accumulated charges can be seen on the MT5 app. So you actually, when you're trading, you actually can take a look 
um, of the accumulated charges or look at the statement that we send you for the, the, the charges. And this will actually affect your profit and loss when you close your position. So let's say you're $100 in profit and you have accumulated maybe $5 in financing charges. Therefore, your total profit would only be 100 minus 5, which is $95. So I'll just do a simple example of what it was. Uh, what it would be like so let's say you're trading one dbs share so buy and sell for one share would 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 roughly um roughly work out to about one cent per day so that would be a pay for buy and sell both sides so if let's say you were trading 100 shares that will work out to about 30 dollars per month obviously if you just bought one share and you held it then you'll be looking at like something about 30 cents per month um so just to roughly gauge what kind of uh you know uh charges that you'll be incurring so let's say for one tesla share uh you're looking to about six percent for one share per day um and then for 100 shares let's say you're looking at about 180 dollars per month uh, on average so yeah so why people say CFD is actually more risky? So yeah, I just try to get into that a little bit more because people always say CFD is risky because it's leverage, you're going to lose all your money. Uh, okay, so maybe just to clarify some of the, uh, you know, uh, suspicions that you might have that CFD is more risky. So normally when you purchase one DBS share, let's say you pay $30 for the share price, you will receive one DBS share and as a shareholder. So hopefully when the price increases to $40, you would sell the share and you would net a profit of $10 from the sale of your share. Should the share price drop, then you obviously, you know, have a unrealized loss of $5. Or if you sell off your share, then you have lost $5 in that transaction. So with a 10% margin, you only need about $3 to purchase one DBS share, which means that you only had $5 in your account you would have lost your total capital investment if let's say the share price dropped from 30 to 25. So that like, yeah, $5 loss. But you have to think in terms of the money that you actually came up with to purchase that particular share. If let's say you put $20 in your account, then obviously, you know, you, you would have enough buffer to, you know, um, for fluctuating share price. So yeah, alternatively, if you had $30 in your account and bought 10 DBS shares, you would have lost your total capital if the share price dropped from $30 to $27 because $3 share, uh, $3 loss times 10 shares. So that'd be a $30 loss. So in this terms, it is more risky because in relation to the capital that you put up, not because it is more risky in any in any sense but because of the leverage and your profit and loss is magnified to a certain extent but if let's say you put 30 dollars in your account and you bought one dbs share then it will be exactly the same if let's say the share price drop all the way to zero then you have lost your total investment same as you would have bought one normal share on a regular basis so like i said I pose the question, what is the likelihood that big companies like DBS or Apple would have their share price dropping 30 to 50% in the short term? And if you practice good risk management, you can actually lose, use leverage trading to your advantage and actually utilize your cash elsewhere. Uh, you know, um, For an example, let's say you're buying DBS share. You put $10 in your account, you can now buy one share use that $7 as a buffer and you know you can use that $20 elsewhere you know if if you're looking at a 10,000 20,000 investment it could be quite significant you know um the amount of shares that you can buy and using your capital elsewhere on different investments so i just highlight uh, some of the you know uh characteristics of the of some of the shares that we have so i do four shares dbs singtel Tesla and Apple. So unfortunately for Apple, as well as, as a few of the other stocks that we have, a minimum will be five shares um, due to our liquid provider. Um, but some of the other ones like DBS, Singtel, Tesla, you actually can, uh, like most other shares on our MT5 platform, you actually can just buy one share. So 
to be exact, um, the margin required for DBS will be about $2.20 based on one share, uh, based on uh, our MT5, which is a USD-based platform. So you need about $2.20 US dollars to start buying one DBS share or, or $3 Singapore dollars based on the $30 share price. So for Singtel, it'll be about $0.15. Cents. Um, Tesla will be about 134 um, and then for Apple, if let's say five shares, uh, you need about 145, 145 for five shares. So obviously for S um, CFD, you will follow the SGX trading um, hours, same as if you were trading US shares, follow US uh, stock trading hours. So for Singapore, it would be 9 to 12 p.m. and then 1 to 5 p.m. with a one our lunch break uh, during the during the noon time. Um, for US shares, it'll be 9.30 p.m. our time to 4 a.m. our time. Um, and then it'll be moved one hour later, let's say when they when they don't do the daylight savings, it'll be 10.30 to 5. Yeah. So price fluctuation, of course, it'll be $1 per price movement. Every time the share moves $1, you'll be uh, $1 in profit or loss. Uh, if you're trading five shares of Apple, there'll be a five dollar price movement. So obviously, no commission um, on our MT5 platform for all of these products or any of the products that we have on our MT5 is zero percent com. Um, and then interest and financing charges, uh, Singapore for DBS and Singtel, you're looking at somewhere between one cent day uh, per day per share, uh, and then. Um, Apple and uh, Tesla are looking at about 30 cents uh, financing charges uh, per day per five shares. So let's say you don't want to buy at the current market price. Maybe let's say you don't want to enter DBS at $30. Maybe you're thinking that maybe the share price is going to drop slightly and then after that it's going to go up. Or maybe once it reaches $40, it will go very nicely to $45 or $50. So Instead of staring at the screen, you know, waiting, um, actually we have some automation on our platform. So um, you can actually put a specific order uh, and then once a specific price that you'd like to enter and once the price reaches that level, they will actually automatically buy or sell for you. So we have six different order types on MT5 platform. So the first one actually exchange execution or market order. So that one, once you just click buy or sell, it will straight away um, execute at the, the price that uh, is currently the current market price. But let's say you want to queue to buy lower. Um, so firstly will be the buy limit. So if you can just take a look at the uh, buy limit order, um, red is the current market price. So you'll be queuing for any price lower than the current market price. So if let's say the market price is 30, you actually can queue anywhere between anything below 30. So maybe 28, 27, 26. Once it reaches that price, they will automatically buy uh, for you. Same for the sell, that will be the other way around. So let's say the current price is 30. You want to queue at any price above 30. So you're looking at anywhere between 32, 33. Once it reaches that price, they automatically sell for you. So let's say you think, now the current price is $30. Once it reaches 35, it will go very nicely to 40. So in that sense, you need to place a buy stop where your buy price is above the current market price. So I have some arrows drawn here. So once it reaches this, the, your buy price, it will automatically buy and you are hoping that the price would continue going up. This one is really to catch the breakouts um, as, as people might call it. Um, and that works sim sim similarly for the sell stop. So uh, once it reaches um, the sell price, it will sell for you and this will be a breakout downwards. So once you hope that it reaches a certain level, once the price falls to a certain level, it will continue falling. Uh, yep. Then the other two is the buy stop limit. So this actually just combines a buy a stop and a limit order together. So you're actually telling the system that you want to be filled within a range. Um, but usually for our products on our MT5 that has really good liquidity. So usually you don't have uh, a scenario where you would have to use this. I think uh, once it reaches the stop price, you usually would uh, you know execute immediately. Um, so just to take note, um, they have this order on MT5, but yeah, just to take note. 
So the, the major factor is driving share prices. Uh, obviously, like any financial product, number one would be supply and demand. More demand, definitely the share price would increase more people buying. Uh, it will increase the share price as you could see it. Um, you know, the power of social media, uh, you know, the, the, the recent GameStop, um, you know, AMC, these stocks, you know, uh, so many people buying it, it, it the price shoot up um, significantly, significantly. So uh, number one example of demand and supply, um, obviously, you know, economics, if there's an increased supply, then obviously the share price would also drop. Um, for shares, number two would be fundamental factors. So company earnings, valuations, you hear things like PE ratio, uh, you know, growth, inflation, economic stimulus. These are all a few of the fundamental factors that might affect share price. Um, then third, obviously, would be technical factors. So your charting, your indicators. Um, and lastly, would be market sentiment. So there is a risk on and risk off. So risk on basically means that um, people feel that um, the market is doing well uh, and people tend to invest in more risky assets such as shares um, and then there'll be a risk off. So uh, more risk, risk on, uh, beneficial risk on assets would definitely be shares. That would be the easiest to tell. Uh, and then risk off. So risk off basically, uh, we saw a lot of risk off last year during the COVID-19 pandemic. So we saw people investing in uh, risk adverse assets, so safe havens such as the US dollar, uh, Japanese yen, gold. Um, these are some of the uh, risk adverse um, assets. So you have to see where the market sentiment is going. Definitely, I feel that the sentiment now is definitely more risk on. We see share prices, uh, you know, reaching all new highs, uh, stock indexes reaching all new highs. So uh, definitely market is more risk on now than risk off as compared to last year. So a little bit on the US dollar and the US economy. Uh, obviously, if the US economy is doing well, everyone else should be doing well. Uh, we've, everyone uses the US economy as the benchmark. So it might be the economy definitely to look at and definitely to follow. So in about 1950, the US dollar became the world's reserve currency. So Basically, that means uh, in a very nice terms, it will mean that they are the only country that if they continue printing money, uh, it would still have value because take a US dollar anywhere around the world and you have value in it anyway. Um, it's the only country that if you keep printing money, it, it will be still valued. So since the fall in equities in the 2020 COVID-19 pandemic, uh, U.S. stock indices actually made a full recovery and even managed to close at new record highs for 2020 by the end of the year. Um, and in 2021, this year, U.S. indices have been pushing for new record highs this year as well. So don't miss the opportunity, you know, start buying something. Uh, once with vaccinations progressing steadily, businesses should reopen with economic activity picking up again. So I feel that this would send equities even higher over time and that my, and there should be another leg upwards if let's say, you know, we manage to find a cure or, you know, um, that this pandemic is behind us and that, you know, should send equities even higher again. So if you're unsure on which particular stock to buy, maybe you don't know which stock is good, then maybe you can consider starting with uh, an index, which is actually a basket um, of stocks. And, you know, if the stock market is doing well, you know, it'll be the easiest way to look at an index. So maybe you can start with the three main um, stock index, which will be the Dow Jones, S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. So just a little go through a little bit um, briefly, you know, on what um, drives the Dow Jones index. So it's actually an index uh, measuring the stock performance of 30 large companies listed on stock exchanges in the United States. So uh, mainly MNC companies, multinational corporations. So the Dow Jones index is available on MT5. So start trading with 5% margin. So normally, let's say now the price is close to 35,000. Usually you will need 35,000 go and buy one Dow Jones index. That is a lot. Uh, I feel that a lot of money, a lot of capital to start with. So we actually, with the CFD, you can start with 
5%. So 5% margin. So with as low as 1,007, 1,750, you actually can start trading one Dow Jones index. Uh, you know, and if you have a little bit more, you actually can buy maybe a few lots, maybe two, three lots and, you know, prof start trading from there. Um, so there are 30 listed companies and the weightage of each company is a little bit different as per any index. So the top five weighted companies on the Dow Jones index will be the Boeing, uh, United Health, Home Depot, McDonald's and Apple. So if you're interested in some of these stocks and maybe you don't want the full risk, you know, of the price dropping a lot, uh, maybe you can just start with an index for, for to start with. Um, major companies driving the S&P. So the S&P 500 is a index measuring 500 uh, large and small companies uh, in the US. So the S&P 500 is also available on MT5. So start trading with 5% margin. So you can start with as low as $220 based on about 4,300 price now. So there are 500 listed companies and the weightage for each company is different as well. Um, so the five top companies on the S&P would be the Microsoft, Amazon, Apple, Facebook, and then Google. Uh, lastly, something a little bit closer to home. Uh, on our MT5, we have the um, Singapore MSCI Singapore Index, or as some of you might know it, it's Simsky. So it's actually designed to measure the performance of large and mid-cap stock segments in the Singapore stock market. So it's available on MT5 and just start trading with 180. So the contract is actually 10, um, 10 con uh, contracts of the index, uh, a little bit different from the Dow and S&P where you'll be trading one uh, because the Simsky is a little bit of a smaller composite. Um, so it has 19 cons um, stock constituents uh, of the Singapore stock market. So the top five would be, uh, the top weighted five would be DBS, OCBC, UOB, Singtel and Capital Land. So if you're interested, yeah, you can get started trading, you know, uh, with some Singapore index uh, on MT5. So yeah, I have to go through a little bit on the risk management. So CFD trading is a leveraged product. So with less, you can trade more. However, it is a double-edged sword. So your profits are magnified, but your losses are also magnified. So just have to be a bit careful. Um, put a good stop loss and you should be fine. Um, so obviously without proper risk management, you can easily run into huge losses. So have some knowledge every time you place a trade and, you know, uh, put a stop loss, you know, uh, put, uh, let, let the system work for you. Uh, how much do you want to lose and how it can work for you? So, Obviously, with leveraged products, always good to have a stop loss. Very important, um, especially for stocks, I feel, um, especially if you're short selling, because uh, usually if you stocks, if you if they move um, to a certain price or a certain area, the likelihood that it will fall back down, you know, to those levels is pretty difficult. It might be quite tough, um, a little bit different from some of the, you know, like FX products or uh, some of the other financial products. Uh, for stocks, if let's say the stocks push a lot higher, usually there's not the, the likelihood of it dropping is quite low. So just to go through, losses are part and parcel of trading. You can't win all the time. Um, it's better to take a small loss now than a big loss in the future. So without a stop loss, you could easily wipe out most of your account. Um, so yeah, just be a little bit careful. Um, try not to remove your stop loss, you know, you could have flipped out, you know, and look for good prices, you know, to follow the trend. So don't focus on only your entry, um, but also on where you put your stop loss as well. So why people are, why most people are unprofitable is because they take profits too early and they cut losses too late. So this is actually has to do with trading discipline. So yep, just to do that um, and you should be quite all right over the long term. So with trading, it's all about minimizing losses and maximizing profits. So if you do not have time to market, uh, monitor the market, obviously you can place a working order, um, either a GTC, which stands for good till cancel order, which should be there um, for at least a few months on our, on our platform. 
uh, we won't delete that. So day orders will expire at the end of the day, obviously. So when in profit, you know, try to move your, you can actually move your stop loss to your break even point so that if the price drops, you'll still be in profit and, you know, profit in a trending market. So increase your um, take profit target, you know, in a trending market upwards. Uh, and if let's say you were stopped out, you know, reanalyze, was there a change in trend, change in market sentiment? So yeah, losses can be profits. You just pick the wrong way. So don't be disheartened when you take a loss. So my name is Jeremy Fu. Uh, I, I leave my contact number there, which it will be the end, which I will also show at the end during the Q&A session. So not to worry. So you actually can drop me a text or, or call on my mobile. Uh, I'm not really in the office now. Um, so uh, try not to call my office if possible. Um, otherwise, just call me on my mobile. That's for sure. Um, you can drop me an email. I will reply to you. Um, our office is at um, Raffle City Tower. If you do want to have an appointment, let me know so that I can actually go down to meet you. I uh, might not be in office all the time now um, with the you know work from home situation. Uh, so a few of the things that I provide for my clients. So um, daily news updates, um, I send through WhatsApp, um, not through email, just WhatsApp. Um, economic date, data table, so that would highlight any of the important events that are happening for the week. Um, that includes technical advice um, on trades on a daily basis. Um, I also give high impact events previews and predictions. Uh, so if let's say some big event, I would actually uh, do a little bit of a preview, what to expect, what to not expect, um, update them on market closures and holidays, you know, if the US market is closed today or any effect, affected market times. Um, I have free one-to-one -one coachings um, for anyone that is interested, whether you're a beginner or, you know, you want to run some things through me, uh, I'll be happy to do that. Uh, and I'm also contactable um, even after office hours. So I feel free to drop me a text, whatever. Um, yep. So just to take, have a little peek, uh, what or what it will look like. So this would be for this week, um, highlighting some of the important events or data releases that are occurring for the upcoming week. So I send this at the start of the week on Monday, just to prep you guys to what 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 to look out for. Um, so for today, which is Thursday. Uh, we had Powell, um, Jerome Powell, which is the U.S. Uh, the chairman of the U.S. Central Bank, the, the Federal Reserve. Um, he had talking about uh, uh, talking about the um, monetary policy report. So actually, um, earlier in the wee hours, about 12 a.m. our time, uh, yet talking about um, some of the monetary. So he actually did some reassuring that you know um, they might not taper some of their monetary um, support so soon and that a early rate hike is probably not um, going to happen. So that actually helped uh, stock um, move stocks actually a little bit higher. Um, and yeah, so later on at 9.30, he'll be talking about it again, but I feel that it's a little bit priced in already. Um, but if not, it still might help um, equities you know, stay afloat. Um, and if you're trading, let's say you know, you're trading FX, is, uh, you know, it is not so good for the US dollar. So we did see the US dollar drop a little bit um, last night uh, during the US session. So this is roughly what you would expect. Uh, if let's say you open an account, what to receive from me, um, some advice. So I do um, my report um, on, the, on the popular products, uh, which will be the major FX pairs, uh, US indexes, Dow and the S&P gold and then crude oil unfortunately there are too many stocks to actually cover i don't uh you know there's uh so many stocks that i can't cover um too many people are trading different stocks so but if let's say you are trading a certain stock and you want me to take a look um at a certain stock like do feel free to message me i can take a look at the chart for you what it looks like technically and some of the fundamentals for, you know for 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 the company as well um, so the third one over here, um, the third um, box here, it actually just shows, you know, affected U.S. timings, um, you know, uh, earlier this month for, you know, the Independence Day, which is the national day for the U.S., you know, um, stock markets were closed, but some of the indexes were actually running half day. So 
yeah, just to take note. Um, and obviously the last one would be the uh, events preview. So um, I actually sent a little bit of preview what's going to happen usually for, let's say, non-farm payroll, which is a pretty big uh, impact data release, or maybe let's say the Fed is having a meeting. So some scenarios just to play out so that you're not fully uh, thrown off what's going to happen. So yeah, a little bit on what's going to happen. And yeah, I do that before the event comes up obviously uh after there's no point in that um so yeah so obviously um for stock some of the um platforms that you might want to use to you know um people write reports people write analysis and you know they're, they're great analysis um and all free so some of these you might want to take a look at uh you know market watch that's pretty good for stocks uh, CNBC, Bloomberg, those covers the news. Uh, you know, any, you know, let's say there's a policy change, uh, you know, or some some big news is going to happen, they'll probably publish it there. Uh, Investing.com has news as well, keeps you updated on data releases. Uh, you can download these apps on the phone, so it notifies you straight away uh, on your phone, let's say big uh, news release. And obviously for stocks, you can use Yahoo Finance, take a look. Um, for us, I mean, besides the one that I send personally for myself, uh, we also have a WhatsApp group. Highlight some of the um, uh, news that's going on going on as well as we have a Telegram group as well that you can join. Uh, so just let me know if you're interested in that, that you, you know, want to receive that. Uh, you know, let me know. Uh, yeah, and I will be glad to you know uh, let you sign that sign on for that. So how to get started? Um, so obviously start on a demo platform um, just to familiarize yourself with the platform, probably maybe try it out, play around with it for a week. Uh, and then after that, secondly would be opening a trading account with us. Um, it's free. You can do it from the comfort of your home online account opening. So you can get to that. Um, otherwise, if let's say you want to meet up face to face, have a little chat, uh, I'll be happy to do that. Um, and then, yeah, once you start on the live trading account, maybe you can start with small volumes. If you are new to stock trading, maybe you can start with, you know, like one to 10 shares, see how you go from there. Uh, then starting, you know, with big amounts, like 100 shares, which I know some brokers, um, they only offer like minimum 100 shares, which can be quite significant. So with us, you can actually scale a lot of it down and, you know, um, scale all of it down, become more practical, start with a small one, and then once you're more confident, then you actually can increase your volume from there. Um, and obviously, you know, hopefully that you will learn some fundamental and technical trades along the way, and that would pro profit you in the long term. So why choose Philip Futures? Um, I think we are one of the few brokers left that have a one-to-one -one broker service. Um, where each trading account is actually assigned a designated broker for your servicing. Um, there is no extra charges um, for this one-to-one -one service. So if you're interested, open an account. I'll be your personal broker. You can text me, WhatsApp me um, for any of your needs. Otherwise, um, for general inquiries, we have a um, general hotline open from Monday to Friday, 9 to 6. Um, it's not like, you know, calling some of the, you know, uh, bank hotlines that you need to wait really long. Uh, someone should answer you, you know, in less than a minute. Um, otherwise, we have 24 hours IT desk hotline assistant for any platform issues, Monday to Friday. Um, and we have 24 hours dealing desk hotlines for any of our call-in trades. Uh, just to note that MT5 is actually a 0% commission, so it's, uh, it's a self-execution platform. But if let's say the platform is down, then you can actually call the dealing desk. Otherwise, if you are trading futures with us, then you can call the dealing desk to place in your call-in trades if uh, you don't want to place them on the platform. Um, fund deposits are received and credited in your trading account within the hour uh, with email receipt or confirmation. This actually is around the clock, so not to worry. Um, we do same day withdrawal and transfer of funds. So if let's say you want to withdraw funds and you submit the request before 9 a.m. Uh, each day, uh, we actually can transfer it to you uh, by the afternoon time or even earlier. Um, trading account statements, as long as you trade, we actually send you statements every day. 
Um, otherwise, we'll send you at the end of the month if you have any uh, open positions. Otherwise, if you don't do anything in your account, we'll actually send you quarterly statements. Uh, yeah. Um, so, you have no additional charges. We do not trade. If you leave money with us, we don't charge you anything if you don't do any trading. So, and no hidden charges besides that. So, as it is, yeah. Uh, yep, you can actually open your account in a few minutes now if all is okay. Um, if you have all the right documentation and all that kind of things, uh, it should be open within a, a few minutes. And actually, you can, once you deposit, we'll credit the funds to you in one hour. So you can start trading really, really fast. Um, you can use your sync pass to open the account. And the only um, document that you need will be your bank statement for foreigners. Uh, you need your passport and maybe some support, supporting documents for your mailing or residential addresses. Uh, but just to note, we, we send the, the our statements by email, so there will be no uh, physical statements sent to your uh, residential address anymore. So if you are interested, um, I'll actually show another QR code at the end of the presentation during the Q&A. You can actually scan to open the account there. Um, otherwise, if you are going to our website and you press the account opening and you still want me to be your broker, do inform me. Um, yeah, and please put my name, I think, uh, on the third page, on the third page of the um, application so that they will know. Otherwise, it will be assigned to uh, randomly to a different um, broker. So obviously, the QR code will be the best. You actually can uh, open the account, do the application on your phone. It's relatively easy. It should take you less than 10 minutes. Uh, but just prepare the bank statement, a screenshot of your bank statement. Uh, Maybe if you open your internet banking, you know, uh, e-statement, do a screenshot, just upload it to uh, the application, that should be, then you should be good to go. Uh, yep, so for our company, we do employ this um, website called Trading Central. So they actually give uh, inputs um, on a daily basis, sometimes even more than a day, depending. Uh, so yeah, you can just take a look. This is for the Tesla. So they just give you some input. Lah. Um, based on technicals, you know, RSI, MACD, some of the indicators that they're using, moving average. Um, yeah, so they will actually give some input whether they think the price is going to go up or down based on technicals. So you actually can access this on our MT5 platform. So maybe, it's, you know, if there is a counter that you are interested in, then you can actually take a look. Uh, we still have a refer a friend uh, promotion. So obviously, if you refer a friend and they start trading, Within the month, uh, you will see, receive $88 per referral from us. Um, and if your friend refers, then your friend would get the uh, monetary, uh, this uh, um, friend, friend referral fee. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we do have a lot of CFD on our MT5 platform besides uh, our FX products. Uh, we have over 100 popular US shares. Um, we have actually added 24 new ETFs um, on the MT5 platform. Uh, we have 13 different indexes on the MT5 platform. Uh, we have about 72 popular uh, Singapore shares, you know, OCBC, Singapore Airlines, SAT, Xing Xiong. Uh, and we have four crypto that might uh, interest you. So we have Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, and Ripple. So uh, let's say if you think Bitcoin is a little bit too expensive to buy one Bitcoin, you actually can go as slow as 0 0.01 Bitcoin. Um, that will work out to a, a, a few hundred dollars, about $200 uh, margin. Uh, besides that, we have a few commodities, you know, uh, WTI oil, if you're interested, yeah, um, on our platform as well. So we don't charge any, any of uh, market data price feeds on MT5. Um, and obviously all the products on mt5 is zero com uh, we have great charting software and we are constantly adding more and more products along the way um, besides mt5 we do have our other platform called philip nova and that will be for our futures products so if you are interested do uh, let me know um, if you are interested to trade some futures uh, so yeah we've basically come to the end of uh, the presentation. Um, unfortunately, there's a bit of a less time, so I can't do the demo. Uh, I can't do a short demo for you. Um, I just want to go straight into the Q&A. 
um we have the account opening link here so um yeah do scan if you're interested go through the 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 account application um and then you know maybe you can try out the platform first open the account and when you are ready then you can fund the account we don't you don't have to uh deposit any money on the account opening so yeah when you're ready you can deposit and then you can start trading when you are ready when you're comfortable uh yeah um my mobile is there you know if you want to drop me a, a message or call or email let me know um i'll just take some q a sessions uh questions at the moment uh yep let me just take a look Okay, uh, I have one question here. It says, um, please explain the dividend adjustment in details if it consists of cash and share. Uh, I'm not sure uh, what you exactly mean, but let me try to guess. Uh, I'm assuming that if you normally bought a cash share and you know you hold a share, uh, they would usually deposit the money into your account if there is a dividend release. So. In this sense, uh, we will just adjust the dividend accordingly to your position. So let's say um, there was a dividend release, maybe $100, for example. So if, let's say your profit was $100. So add the dividend, so your net profit would be $200 on the account. So it will be exactly the same as you would bought a cash stock. Uh, dividend, uh, the dividend will be exactly the same as, as it is. So if it was 70 cents per share, the dividend was 70 cents or 50 cents. So if you're holding 10 shares, there'll be a five dollars um, adjustment accordingly. I uh, hope that answers your question. Uh, another question: Can we hold CFD long term uh, as there is finance costs? Um, yes, you actually can hold the CFD as long as you want. Uh, no. Um, it's not a dated contract um so you actually can hold it as long as you want forever uh just that note that there will be the financing cost um charged to you uh on a daily basis so if you hold long term you know maybe a, a few months or maybe you know a year or two it might be quite um significant on on the financing cost maybe a little bit more as as per short term so uh yeah uh, something to take note but obviously you know your it might be quite um insignificant as compared to your profits um on cfd itself okay another question uh what is philip's strategy to select hong kong cfd products so um actually we are, we actually added the ones that are popular at the moment obviously the ones with the most liquidity um obviously because um, smaller cap stocks might not be uh, might not provide so much liquidity so we actually pick more of the bigger cap stocks or the ones that have more liquidity so um, the ones that you see are actually uh, yeah maybe the more liquid ones or you know more big uh, you know more popular in that sense um, that are traded so yeah just to provide that extra liquidity Uh, another question so sgx trading in singapore dollars or us dollars so uh actually of course if you're trading on sgx is denominated in singapore dollars but because mt5 is a us uh us based platform a usd based platform so all the numbers that you see on the platform would be based in us dollars so uh, margin would be in us dollars profit and loss would be in us dollars so Maybe if let's say you bought one DBS share and you know at thirty dollars and the price went up to um, thirty five dollars, um, therefore you would have made a uh, you know uh, five dollar profit. So based on the exchange rate, you would see on the US on MT five platform as maybe like three dollar fifty cents uh, based on the exchange rate lah. Um, so yeah, just to note that, but obviously it would be exactly as five dollars if you bought thirty to thirty five. Um, but after the exchange rate, it, you could look if you're looking at somewhere, you know, uh, you see three fifty. Why why is it three fifty and not five? But yeah, it's because it's in US dollars. So yeah.
Okay, another question. Uh, what is the difference between trading CFDs via Philip Securities versus Philip Futures? Um, okay, so actually, um, Philip Securities is actually our brother, sort of brother company. Uh, we are under the um, big um, company, which is Philip, um, Philip Capital Group. Um, but we are separate entities, so we don't actually, we can't share information. So uh, obviously for Philip Securities, they're using the Poems platform, if that, you know, I'm pretty sure uh, quite um, well-known platform. So um, obviously, yeah, you'll be, for Philip Securities, you'll be trading CFD there. Uh, with us, you'll be using um, MT5. Uh, yeah, so that's one difference, different platform. Um, a, Besides that, um, I to as far as my knowledge, I know that Philip Securities does charge some uh commission on their CFD trades. So maybe for us, a little bit different that we don't charge commission. So maybe that might be um might be one difference for you. Uh, besides that, um, uh, besides platform commission, um, uh, maybe the charting because of the platform, yeah. Maybe the charting, uh, some of the the functionalities of the platform might be a little bit different. You know, uh, placing your order, um, for us, um, you know, the 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 platform is a little bit better. I mean, in terms of you know, looking at your live profit and loss, it's it's really um, yeah. Um, if you try out the demo, it's great. Um, so yeah. Okay, uh, another question. Um, how about withdrawal from MT5 currency conversion? Uh, okay, so um, the withdrawal obviously when you deposit, it will be we will convert your Singapore dollars to US dollars. Uh, we will usually base on the spot rate on what 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 the current exchange rate is now. Currently, maybe about one point three five something. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, if you do have US dollars and you want to transfer in US dollars to us, um, feel free to do so. Uh, we don't, uh, yeah. So if that's, yeah. Um, otherwise, once you withdraw, uh, we actually, if let's say you, uh, you want to withdraw in Singapore dollars, we actually convert uh, the sing the US dollars to Singapore dollars. So we're not a bank. We're not, we don't, we don't give you a really bad exchange rate. Um, if that's uh yeah, just to be reassuring a little bit uh so yeah uh, we will do convert at the spot rate um yeah uh and then um transfer the money to you in singapore dollars otherwise if you want to withdraw in us dollars that will be fine too um just to note that if you withdraw in us dollars there might be some um tt transfer charges if let's say you are using an overseas bank uh yeah Okay, uh, I have another question. Um, so um, he says that he's new to this. Um, do you guide us only for CFD or other products such as Forex and stocks? Uh, yeah, so actually our CFD actually runs on stocks uh, indexes. Um, my main, uh, my main uh, sort of say, um, what, I, what I fully more interest in will be FX. I mean, uh, to be honest. Uh, so uh yeah, I can definitely guide you on FX. Um FX is uh something that I, I, I really think that the product is really um is my, my interest personally. So um I'm happy to guide you on FX. Um otherwise um CFD will definitely be tracking the stock. So uh if you you do want to look into some stocks, uh yeah, I'll be happy to look into you know some of the big stocks that uh might interest you. Um yeah, whether you know it's some of the popular uh, US stocks like Tesla, Apple, you know, some of these good stocks, you know, showing some good strength these days. So I think quite good levels to start buying now, uh, you know, with targeting higher prices as well. Uh, yeah, so I'll be happy to look into some FX uh, and stocks. Yeah, because the CFD actually, there's um, a lot of CFDs, um, ETF, stocks, uh, commodities. Yeah, so yeah, I'll be happy to look into some into look into some of the other products that we have. Okay, uh, another question. Uh, is there a difference 
in interest charges as compared to POEM CFD versus MT5? Um, to as far as my knowledge, um, I think the financing charges or interest charges varies between um, different brokers, but I think it's pretty widespread that um, it ranges between three to eight percent, depending on the uh, share counter. So, um, yeah, um, depending on the on the counter that you are trading, it might be a little bit more or a little bit less. Uh, so I think. Uh, as far as I know, poems also charging roughly around the same. So you should be looking at roughly around the same uh, commission charge, uh, interest charges in that sense. But uh, as far as I know, uh, for uh, some of their counters, they only offer minimum, which is 100 shares, uh, which is their one lot. So, uh, you know, yeah, it might be slightly, you know, um, interest charges might be a lot higher in that sense uh, because due to the the higher number of shares uh yeah hope that answers your question okay maybe i'll just take one more question uh and then maybe it's time to call it a day uh i if you do want to uh yeah if 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 i didn't answer your question i'm sorry because there's a there's quite a number of questions uh so yeah if i didn't answer your questions uh i would uh, feel free to um message me or drop me an email i'll be happy to answer your questions have a chat with you no problems um so let me just take one more question and then let's call it a day Okay, uh, last question. Is there a chat group for new traders for discussion of trading? Um, I'm not sure whether there's a chat group. Um, personally, for our company and for me, uh, I do a broadcast out. Uh, so you don't really, you can't really have a conversation, a chat. Um, but um, as far as I know, um, you know, there might be some chat groups that maybe you can find online um to to assist you otherwise read some news um there should be enough uh to keep you you know entertained and all that kind of thing uh yeah hopefully that answers your question uh okay uh i think uh we have to call it a day uh time is running out uh yeah so thank you very much for attending my webinar everybody um I leave some of the QR codes for you if you want to do some scanning. Um, obviously, to try the MT5 demo, um, download the the um, the platform. Um, you can use it on your mobile, uh, or you know you can set it up on your desktop, and then you can view the total list of products that we have on our MT5. Um, yeah. Otherwise, if you like to open an account, do feel free. Um, Contact me if you have any questions, if I didn't answer your questions today. Um, yeah, and thank you very much for attending my webinar. I hope to uh, you know, have a, have a chat with some of you soon, get in touch with some of you soon, and hopefully to onboard you as one of, my, one of our clients and we have a good trading relationship. Uh, all right, thank you and enjoy the rest of your evening and have a good weekend. Thank you.